football, you have an offensive team and you have a defensive team. Now the, the norm, what's typically said, is a great defense, you have an even better offense. It's usually not the other way around. Why is that? Well, if you are controlling the football majority of the game and the only way to earn points is on offense, then the highest percentage chance of you winning a football game is pretty much based on how long you controlled the football, right? How long have you controlled your life? Has it only been five years you've been controlling your life? Have you been under the control of someone else your whole entire life? Your boss? Does your boss control 40 to 50 hours of your life on a weekly basis, 52 weeks out of the year for the last 40 years? Oh my goodness, you have not been playing proper defense and now you're 55 years old. So I'm gonna teach you the principles of how to basically win not only a football game, but win the game of your life, which is gotta, gotta know your numbers, know where you're at, seek wisdom, find that coach, you got our quarterback, right? That quarterback is gonna be able to see things you can't, right? And then boom, they see an open path right here, wide open instead of throwing over here where, where there's three defenders and you're trying to stick an investment tightly in there thinking, yeah, that dude's not going to jump and just catch that interception and run it back for a, a touchdown. And now when they run it back this way, in, in terms of your life, boom, sets you back three, four years. Because you're trying to squeeze, you're trying to take massive risk, you're trying to be a, a gambler instead of, hey, dude, somebody wide open right here. I know they may not be the best receiver in the world, but my God, they are wide open. And you can score that touchdown. That's when you're on offense. You could have a crappy offense and have more wins in my opinion, with an amazing defensive team. Because if you're on offense and you throw that interception and now we're playing defense, they tackle that player right then and there, let's just say, boom, ball turned over, you're out of control. But since you have a phenomenal defense, you're able to hold them back for three, four downs, turn the ball over, back into your position, ball's back in your control. They never scored, even though they took the ball from you. They didn't score you were able to mitigate the risk. You were able to course correct, pivot, because you have a phenomenal quarterback and you have an even better defensive team. In my opinion, that's the way to win life. Have a phenomenal defensive team and your offense is gonna look amazing, in my opinion, okay? This is just the way I think, it's my template, right? Again, you don't have to agree with this. Make it your own, right? Change it up, however you like. So I'm gonna start with building a defensive team, right? Then I'm gonna show you the offensive team that I've built over the years of my own life. And then as a bonus, you don't have to do these things, but I have two things on the side here, debt slash capital and a lender, right? This is optional. I don't think it's required when you have a phenomenal defensive team and you have an even better, uh, obviously when you have a great defensive team, your offense team looks even better. Remember, your defensive team is not competing with your offensive team. This is another mistake a lot of people make. Prime example. Your defensive team will typically not look the best in this category of ROI, meaning return on investment, because you're measuring the wrong ROI when evaluating these people. There's probably 15 other layers of your defensive team that is immeasurable, right? Immeasurable. For example, let's say you have an insurance agent. What is the ROI on life insurance? How the heck do you calculate ROI on having a death benefit that would protect your entire immediate family in case anything happened to you, your life? You can't measure it. We won't know until after you're dead. So it's like, we only discover it in hindsight. It's like prophecy. We only see the prophecy once it's actually occurred. You could have the prophecy written and you're reading it, you're reading prophecy, you're reading what's going to happen, and you might be in the middle of the prophecy or the beginning of the prophecy, but we won't really have hindsight until it's actually been completed or to, towards the end of that prophecy once it's become fulfilled. Then you're like, oh my gosh, look what dad did, look what mom did. 30 years later, we're still benefiting from what mom and dad did, and, they're, and they've been in the grave for 30 years. So you won't ever see the ROI on having a death benefit. But as you're living, it's so hard to measure the ROI on having life insurance, having a death benefit, right? So again, 
we're, we're, we're typically using the wrong measurement when evaluating your defensive team. The defensive team typically doesn't score points, right? So sometimes they get a little devalued because you're focused so much on offense. You're focused so much on, on throwing a Hail Mary and getting the highest ROI on your investment, not realizing the massive risk that you're taking that can set you back three, five years, seven years, 10 years, just to recover, right? We're missing this in our, in our own financial lives. So building the defensive team, these are the people that protect your wealth, perpetuate wealth, solve for immeasurable, immeasurable value. And yes, there is some ROI in some of this for sure. So some of the key components that I've built in my life over the last six years is having an insurance agent in my life, that person's name is Steve Parisi. That is my go-to guy when I want to implement life insurance policies on my life, my partner, my family, friends, clients. It's my go-to guy. Then I have a doctor to evaluate my body's reaction, how it's performing in the world. I have a CPA. This is the person that could be the bookkeeper, could be the tax planner, your tax coach, professional, CPA, right? Strategist. So a lot of titles in there, but overall we're discussing taxes as it relates to the CPA. Taxes is your number one expense in life. If you're a man, it's a woman, okay? So they're like neck and neck, but more than likely the woman's more expensive than taxes. Now, as it relates to your CPA. If we can mitigate and reduce taxes tremendously, you'll have more money to spend on the woman and not just spend it, but be efficient with it long term because you got to think long term. This is a life, life thing, right? So if we can recover a majority of your ability to produce income and keep more of that money, what's the ROI on that? That is measurable, which is great. But what becomes immeasurable are the things that you can do with this money that you weren't even accounting for, you weren't even expecting. And with proper tax planning and coaching and strategy, we're able to essentially acquire money that we did work for, but we kept more of the same dollar. Insane, right? So that for me is a company called Better Wealth. Uh, Caleb is the, the owner of that, right? And he's someone that I look up to and he's got a YouTube channel, very influential. And that's someone I learned from in the, in the realm of taxes. He has got a whole tax team. He's got an insurance team. He's got coaching, right? Then you need a lawyer. Okay. A lawyer is going to protect the assets that the guys over here, your offensive team is acquiring for you, is helping you acquire. The lawyer is going to protect that, right? Therapy counselor, right? So th there could be different terms for this type of person. This is the person that you go to to process the stress that you're incurring building this financial dream team. This is not easy to do. I've literally spent the last six years trying to build this. There's, It's come with a lot of stress. You need a lot of patience. You need to be able to discuss and talk. You need to be able to go somewhere in private and air out what you're feeling. Because if you don't, it gets locked up and then your relationship with your lawyer, your relationship with your CPA, your relationship with your lender, your relationship with your business coach. If you're not able to process your emotions, your feelings, then they may explode on people that are trying to serve you and then they distance themselves from you because they don't want that stress. Remember, these are service providers. Unless you got the money to have that person just serve you and you alone, different story. But when most of us are starting out, you're dealing with someone that's working with many other folks. So the best thing you could do as the customer is not impose any new stresses or, or unwanted stress than that person can handle. Your lawyer is not going to be your therapist. Neither is your CPA, neither is your insurance agent, neither is your real estate investor, neither is your business coach. That's not what their role is. But with a therapy or a counselor, that's simply outside of this whole thing can help defend the spiritual attacks that can come and the uh, emotional roller coasters that you'll experience of creating success and having some failures along the way and having people come into your life for a season and then they exit 
or people that you thought were there for a life, but they're really for a season, and the people that were there for a season, really for a, for a whole life, and all those different things, right? So therapy, counseling, I think that's extremely important. Then you have estate planning, legacy. This is, again, immeasurable ROI. You'll never know what the true fruit would be of what you're doing today, right? You won't know, but the people you set it up for will be that much more better off, right? Higher chance. You're creating a defensive procedure to ensure wealth goes beyond you from multiple generations. So for this estate planning, legacy planning, my guy is a person named Minor Ramos, who I'm working with. That's building my estate plan, trust, will, right? Getting everything squared away at a very young age so I don't have to think about it later on, right? And I can just make tweaks along the way, right? So this is what I have so far on my defensive team. I have an insurance agent, I have a doctor, I have a CPA, I have a lawyer, I have a counselor, I have a therapy, I have estate planning, legacy planning. This defensive team helps me dominate, protect, and control my life. That's their job. Help me dominate, help me protect, help me control so that I can earn more points. My QB coach, right, my quarterback, in this example, technically is me. I am my own financial coach. That's actually not really the best position I wanna be in, okay? That's not the best decision. So.